Welcome back. We're going to continue our study of radicals by looking at transformations and mappings. Remember, a radical function is a function where at least one variable is part of the radicand, or the part of the expression that is underneath the radical symbol. The standard form of a radical function is y equals the nth root of x, where n just represents the index. For example, for a square root, it would be 2, a cube root would be 3, etc. Now remember, a very simple function, or a function where it's as basic as it gets, is called a parent function or a parent graph. For example, the parent function of a square root would just be y equals the square root of x. As you saw in the last video, remember the shape of these. All those with even roots is more like a half of a u on its side, like this blue line, whereas all those with odd roots are more like this curve or this red line. As we saw with all the other functions, like absolute value and quadratics, these functions, whether even or odd roots, can be moved left and right, up and down, which are translations, can be stretched or compressed, which are dilations, or they can be reflected over the x or y axis or another line. The pattern that you've learned with all these other functions previously still hold with radical functions. For instance, the number on the end on the outside that tells you how much you're going to move up or down. If k is positive, you move up. If it's negative, you move down. The number on the inside of the radical next to the x, well, that's going to tell you the shift left or right. Again, it's the opposite of what you think. So if it's a plus h, you're going to move to the left. And if it's a minus h, you're going to move to the right. The number in front of the radical, not the small number, not the root up top, but the number in front of the radical, that tells you if it's a stretch or compress. If it's bigger than 1, it's a stretch, and if it's between 0 and 1, it's a compression. If you want to flip the function over, then what you do is you just change the sign of that a or change the sign in front of the entire function. You can also reflect over the x-axis and reflect over the y-axis, but again, just like when we did the other functions, it's kind of hard to tell if you're using these two or a combination of the ones above. So we typically stay with the ones above in order to describe the transformations. Now again, you can describe transformations just by looking at the equation and without using a graphing utility. For example, based off of the pattern, I know that a plus 2 inside means that I'm going to move to the left two spots. Again, when it's inside, it's the opposite of what you expect. A plus would be to the left and minus would be to the right. Look at number three. If I have a negative in front of the function, then what that means is I'm going to end up flipping or inverting the function. Number five, when there's a number in front of the square root, this one's 0.2, and it's between 0 and 1, which 0.2 is, then it's a compression of the function. And so this one is a compression of 0.2, or 1 fifth. Number seven has two different transformations taking place. The plus 2, as we already saw on the inside of the radical, is a left 2. And then the number on the outside tells us how much it's shifted up or down. A minus 3 would be down 3. Again, nothing has changed when compared to the other functions we've already studied. So take a minute and try the even numbers. Now, just like the other functions, we can put these ideas together and we can write equations for functions just by looking at a graph. In this case, I will usually give you an idea of which root it is, whether it's square root, cube root, fourth root, etc. What we're looking at right now is a square root, so we're going to be dealing with y is equal to the square root of x, and we want to look at what transformations take place. Now, all even roots will start at the origin. So you have the square root, fourth root, sixth root, they all start at the origin. So that's what you're going to compare the origin with the starting point of this one. And so now we just go through the different transformations. In order to go from the origin to this point, we're going to have to go down 4. So we're down 4. Now a down 4 means that this number is on the outside of the radical, and it's going to be a minus 4. We're going to have to go to the left 3. So left and right go on the inside of the radical, and because it's left, it's the opposite of what you would expect, so it's a plus 3. To check if the size changed, go from the starting point, go over 1, down 1. If you're still on the graph, the size didn't change. In this case, the size didn't. 
And in most of these cases, we won't deal with size changes when we're trying to write the functions because these can get rather complicated. And then lastly, is it inverted? In this case, yes, it is inverted or flipped because with all the even roots, the parent functions look something like this. So this one is flipped upside down. So in order to demonstrate inverted on the equation, what we do is we change the sign in front. So it'd be a negative. Now, just like when we were doing the odd powers with polynomials, these odd roots where it's this nice little curve is going to have a major point that we're going to have to watch, and that's the inflection point right here. That's where the curve changes from going like this to like this. So that's what we're going to compare, and we're going to compare it to the origin. Because when the index is odd on a radical, you get this nice curve that goes through the origin, and the origin has that inflection point. Now again, I would usually tell you which root you're dealing with. So in this case, we're going to be dealing with the cube root. So it's going to be y is equal to the cube root of x. And now we look at all the transformations. Well, to go from the origin to this point here, I'm going to have to go down 5. So again, up and down is on the outside. So I'm going to put a minus 5 on the outside. I'm going to go left 2. So that's on the inside, and it's the opposite of what you think. So left 2 is a plus 2. Is it inverted? Well, in this case, no, because all of these go like this. If it was inverted or flipped, it would go down like this. It would be decreasing. And then did the size change? Again, you could go from the inflection point up 1 over 1. I'm still on the graph, and so the size did not change. And just like we did with other functions, we can also talk about mappings, which are the directions from point A to point B. So we could talk about the directions that map us or the transformations that map us from the orange line to the blue line. In this case, we're going to just focus on the starting point and use those as our key points. So to go from the orange line to the blue line, I would have to go down 6. And I would have to go to the left, 5. They both have the same size, and I could tell that by going down 1 over 1, still on the graph, up 1 over 1, still on the graph. So their size didn't change. But as you notice, this one is decreasing and this one is increasing, so it got flipped or inverted. So to transform the orange line to the blue line, it's down 6, left 5, inverted. Remember, mappings are directions. We are not going to turn this into an equation. We're asking how do you get from one place to another, not what is the other place. We can also do this without even looking at a graph, and we've done this with other functions. What we can do is we can look at where we're starting. So if I look at where we're starting, look at where we're ending, I can figure out how to get there. So if I look at the outside, I'm starting at a negative 3. I'm ending at a plus 1. So how do I go from a negative 3 to a plus 1? Well, I'm going to have to add 4. Well, if I add 4 to the outside, then what that is is that's going to be moving it up 4. I can compare the inside. On the inside, I'm starting at 2. I only have x on the inside of this one, so I'm ending at 0. So how do I go from 2 to 0? Well, I'm going to have to subtract 2. And if I subtract 2 on the inside, then that means I'm going to go right 2. Everything else in these radicals are the same. And so to transform from f of x to g of x without even graphing, we're going to have to go up 4 and right 2. Let's look at the bottom one. Again, we're going to look at where we're starting, how do we get there, and where we're ending. So we're starting at 1 on the outside end, and we're ending at negative 6. So to get from 1 to negative 6, we're going to have to subtract 7. So that means we're going to go down 7. On the inside, we're starting at negative 5. We're ending at negative 3. To go from negative 5 to negative 3, I have to add 2. So if I add 2 on the inside, I'm going left 2. Both of them are positive, so I'm not flipping. But in this case, in front I have a 3. In front of this one I have a 1. Now remember, this is 3 times a square root and 1 times a square root. So we're not adding or subtracting in this case, but we're multiplying. So 3 times what is going to give me 1? Well, that's going to be 1 third, or 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is a compression 
of one third because the number is between zero and one. Now, sometimes they give us the starting point and they give us the mappings, they give us the directions, and they want to know what is point B. So they give us the starting point, the directions, and they want to know what the final destination is. Again, we can do this without even graphing. If I'm going to be moving left 5, that means I'm going to have to add 5 on the inside. So I'm going to plus 5 in the inside. So I get g of x is equal to the square root of x. 2 plus 5 is plus 7. And if I move up 6, that means I have to add 6 to the outside. So I have negative 3 plus 6 is going to be a positive 3. So to take f of x and move it left 5 and up 6, I'm going to get g of x, which is the square root of x plus 7 plus 3. Looking at the last one, again, I want to take f of x and I want to move it up 1, so I'm going to add 1. And when I add 1, I get g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 5, and then negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so I don't have to put anything on the outside. And then I want to invert it. So I'm going to change the sign in front. Well, this one's positive, so now I'm going to make this one negative. So taking f of x and moving it up 1 and inverting it or flipping it, I get g of x is equal to negative the square root of x plus 5. As you see, all these different transformations and the patterns and the mappings are exactly the same as we did it with absolute value and polynomials and linear, etc. The patterns don't change. You're just applying it to a different shape now, a different function.